Okay, so welcome to the OSPO working group meeting for February 22nd. Um, as always, we are under the chaos code of conduct, so please be kind to each other. We have a few things on the agenda, and there is there is room for a little more. So if you have some some other items, feel free to feel free to add those. Uh, the first thing at the the top of the at the top of the list is um, the contributor contributor risk. So we've talked in this meeting before about how we're putting together some insight guides, and um, I think I think people are still trying to get their heads wrapped around what these what these are, and because they the insight guides tend to involve a lot of interpretation. I think the people that are sort of best positioned to write the insight guides are people who've spent a lot of time interpreting metrics, um, like the folks in this particular call, which is why I've I've actually kind of stopped talking about the insight guides for a little bit in some of the other uh, working groups, um, because I think that until we until we actually write a few, I think it'll be I think it'll be easier for people to understand what they are after they can see a couple of examples. So what I wanted to do in this meeting is not necessarily um, we don't need to write the uh, contributor risk guide um, collaboratively in this in this meeting. But what I wanted to do is just have an open discussion about the things that you all think about when you're working on um when you're working on uh yeah yeah i know the bus factor i i think lottery factor re, yeah i think we need to rename this metric there are some some within the chaos community who disagree with that because bus factor has um been used for a long time i when i present this talk about lottery factor uh so anonymous whoever you are i agree with you um, but for right now, our metric is called bus factor, so I have to kind of use that. Um, we have, I've thrown some graphs in just to give you some ideas. There's, you know, contributors, um, you know, contributor, contributor growth, um, types of contributors who contribute to different, different things. Um, but like I said, I don't necessarily, uh, yeah, Brian, you have a question. I, I, well, I didn't mean to interrupt your thought. So I, are we to... I'm going to ask a dumb question. Are we talking about the risk to contributors or are we talking about risks associated with contributors? Because when I see bus factor, I see the latter where it's like, oh, they're sorry, lottery factor. There's not enough, like there's not enough contributors. So that is a risk associated with contributors. But then I didn't know if we were also talking about like, what are the risks to an individual contributor uh, going into a project, which would be weird and non-existent, I thought, but yeah, I, so maybe I'm just misreading. No, it's, it's, um, it's, it's the bus factor one. It's lottery factor. It's, um, what are the, for, for a particular project, what are the, um, I'm trying, I'm trying to think of how to, how to phrase this, but what, what kind of risks are there to the project based on the types of contributors that you have? So do you have enough contributors? Are they contributing in the right places? Um, it's it's not about the risk to contributors, but the risk, um, yeah. Yeah, okay, sorry, I overthought that. Yeah, no, no worries. Um, I feel like you articulated that better. Um, than, than I did, but uh, so so what I wanted to do is I just wanted to kind of open it up. And when you think about the the contributor risks within a project, um, what what do you care about? What do you what do you think about? So one thing that I think about is not just the sheer numbers of people. It's I don't know how to say this right. It's it's the it's a combination of the existing workflow, like is all the workflow being deliberately challenged or, or channeled into a spot where there's like only one or two people who can do it. Mm -hmm. So that's a, that's a process problem. 
Can I get, can I get someone to take, sorry, sorry, one second. Can I get someone to take notes in the agenda doc for the things I'm talking about? Because I, I don't want to, I don't want to take all the notes in the, in the, I can try in the guide. Um, sorry, Brian, go ahead. No, it's okay. So you got the, I, I think of the process problem is the process deliberately making a bottleneck. And then the other thing that I think about is are there is there a human or humans who are kind of deliberately taking it upon themselves and they're creating their own bus factor? And that might be unfortunately malicious. Mm -hmm. It might be somebody has control issues. It also might be benign where they still have control issues, but they're not doing it for control. They're doing it maybe because they feel like, oh, I'm the only one that knows how to do this. And it's still a problem, but it's not it's not maliciously based. You just have to have a come to deity talk with them. Um, so something like that. But those are the two things that I think of. You like people who make themselves the bus factor or the process creates that. Mm -hmm. um, in, in larger projects where there are enough people, where there's not a lot of people, then then that's usually the problem. You know, it kind of is hard to avoid. So those are the two things. And and how would you address those two problems? Like how how would you work with, um, so beyond, beyond identifying them, what kind of improvements would you try to make in the projects? Um, so the first one, when I've seen that, it's a question like, so with process workflow, <clears throat> it's having somebody kind of, you know, if you're lucky, independently look at this and say, oh, why is this happening? Because when you're in it, a lot of people think, oh, this is the way we've always done it. Um, and, you know, Bob or June or whatever, they've always handled it that way. Um, so having somebody independently look for that and seeing a process bottleneck um, is really, if you're lucky enough, that would be the thing. And then when you do find one, you know, is to try to say, is this part of the process A, even necessary? Um, and if it is necessary, is there a way we can spread it out so multiple people can do this? You know, so if somebody's on PTO or holiday or wherever you want to call it, can are there other people that can fill that in? And then it becomes a training thing and you get you cross train, basically. Mm -hmm. um, in the other case, that's obviously a little bit more politically nuanced. You know, some would say I have a low filter, <laughs> and you know, my solution to the problem might not be the good solution to the problem, but it does involve having, in all seriousness, a crucial conversation with the person and determine why they feel like they have to have their hands on this mm -hmm. um, for good or ill. Um, and then, and working that, and if you're lucky, working that out collaboratively and, and getting them to realize that they're taking on, they're taking on all this stuff isn't good for the project that they love. Um, and it is, a, you know, in, in so many reasons that we can articulate here. I don't want to go on about it. Yeah. And I think in, in both of those cases, I think mentoring can also be a part of the, the mm -hmm. solution as well. Uh, what do what do other people think? What do you what do you look for? <clears throat> Remy? So maybe these aren't as contributor specific. They're a little bit more repo specific, but mm -hmm. Dependency sprawl and lib years are two that come to mind pretty immediately for risk. But um, in other contexts, elephant factor is one that uh, we used to think of a lot more uh, in other OSPOs I was in, but less so in government, just because a lot of our repos tend to be, you know, government led for whatever, you know, for sometimes statutory reasons. So the contributor mix isn't as much of an issue or as much of a, a, a focus. But a proliferation is one that I definitely think more about in the government context. It's sort of like, are we rewriting something that has already been solved in the open source community? Or are we solving the same problem in a different part of the organization that's already been solved by another part of the organization? Mm -hmm. So like duplicate work, uh, which is 
not necessarily a contributor problem, but kind of, because if you're not looking around at what's available or you can't look around at what's available, then you tend to duplicate a lot of work and effort. Yeah. And I think at least some of that is probably going to be covered in one of the other insight guides, because we're going to have one that's similar to um, contributor risk for organizational influence, maybe is what we called it. Some, something like that, but it's uh, focused kind of around the, the organizations. And then yeah, I, th I think we're going to address lib years and some of those in one of the other insight guides, and I can't remember which one. I got one Probably. that's actually related to contributors this time. Okay. Uh, we, for every one employee under the age of 30, there are seven over the age of uh, 50 in the federal government. So uh, we are going to be facing a talent cliff in the near future. So we think a lot about our... Uh, tenure of our core developers in a lot of projects, particularly the ones that deal with mainframes or COBOL. Uh, that is a, a big challenge, a big contributor risk here in our in our particular OSPO. Yeah, absolutely. That's something I've been thinking about for a long time um, as it relates to the Linux kernel, right? Because because most of most of the Linux kernel maintainers are, you know, roughly my age, roughly Linus's age, like early 50s. Um, and we're all going to retire pretty soon. And are there enough of those, like you said, the under 30s who are going to uh, be there to to take take up the slack? And it's a, I think it's a big problem. I, I think that's a really good point. Uh, Gary. Are you on? Wait, I think you're you're muted somewhere because I don't I, I have I have a hardware mute and a software mute because um, <laughs> I love pranking myself. Uh, I think that part of this that I think about a lot is whether or not effort is going to just kind of go into the void where what is the momentum of the project or the community that somebody would be contributing into. Uh, if there's hundreds of open PRs and issues that go unanswered and there's not a lot of interaction from the community, that can be like a risk in that whatever work that I'm putting in might get drowned out in the sea of other contributions that aren't being acknowledged. Um, and I think types of contributions is there, but I'd be interested to see something like either uh, change request closure ratio or issue age or something like that also included to uh, show the risk of either, yeah, proxies for responsiveness, Remy. Like I think there are some um, chaos metrics that put themselves in the spot of like how much do the maintainers of this project actually watch it and how well are they keeping up with the influx of contributions yeah i think that's well anybody who knows me knows i think that's super important those are two of my favorite metrics um and and i think we cover those in the responsiveness guide um so we are also going to have a special okay. guide for for that as well um yeah the more the more we talk about this yeah, I, I still think I need to think about how we structure the guides a little bit more because it's it's hard to it's hard to like yeah uh, that's a bigger question. Let's keep talking about contributor risk because that's the the topic for right now. Let's uh, maybe get a few more a few more inputs on this. I also encourage you at the bottom of this document is a contributors. So if you've been chiming up and talking about this, if you want to add yourself as a contributor, please please do. Um, and then maybe, and then I'll, I'll, I'll bring it back around for feedback too, and, and focus it on, on some of you that have contributed thoughts to this, this guide. Uh, Sophia. Um, well, I, I was waiting to chime in because Dom, I know I, I kind of gave a presentation about this last year and it's been really nice to hear many of you come up with the things that I suggested in that. So I didn't want to bring it up yet until we had others had the chance to speak. I think the one thing that hasn't really been covered yet is burnout. Um, and how you're generally people are feeling about their work. Um, we do have a metric already designed around that to sort of assess whether or not you feel energized and or drained by your work. Um, and just sort of, we've been talking about a lot of things that would influence that, whether or not you're feeling overwhelmed or you're getting less responsive or process is breaking down in scale. Um, but there is an element of whether or not that's getting to you. Um, and that would also contribute to your risk. And I apologize, my camera is going wonky. I cannot see anyone, so I might have to restart my computer in the middle of this call. Um, so sorry about that. Um, but I can also share that presentation as a link, um, just as another resource to help people think about this problem. Yeah, if you could drop that in, I'd, I'd, I'd love that. I, I'm gonna rewatch it, because it was a great talk. 
Um, okay, so I would I would encourage you if you think of anything else, just drop it in these minutes for the meeting, um, or drop it as a comment somewhere in the in the insight guide. Uh, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all these notes and incorporate them into the um, into the guide. So I would encourage you to to do that. But I, we do I want to be um, conscious of the fact that we also have other things on the agenda. So I don't want to take up the whole whole day for this, but. But these are some really great ideas, and this does give me a, a really nice uh, starting point on this on this guide. So I'll I'll do some work on it, try to summarize what what everybody said, and then I'll bring it back around for for feedback again too. Okay, and thank you for all of you who've been helping with the the notes, Sean and others. Um, okay, so the next thing on the agenda: How do OSPOs prefer to use chaos tools? I'm not sure who added this. I that was first me. That was Gary. Yeah, Gary. it was me. All right, I go did for it. it. Mm -hmm. um, thanks, Sean, for recognizing that I'm I'm working with the Augur folks yeah. uh, to deploy Augur on prem with Docker, and there is some fun associated with containerizing the deployment fully. And I was kind of curious of like, am I just a luddite in a weird way saying I want to use Docker? I want to deploy with Docker. Let's deploy with Docker. Um, and I thought I'd ask this group, like, do folks uh, deploy chaos tools on prem, and how do they do that? Like, are we all using mini infrastructure teams within our organizations to do this? Are we all taking on some infrastructure work? Would something like containerization be useful to help deploy these things because it's really hard? Uh, Brian, I see you have your hand up. That's that's the opening prompt. Well, yeah. So we we're currently not we're not using an on-prem. We're sharing um, an instance uh, over at the University of Missouri, um, in, in in Augur's home. But I know my team would be very interested in containerizing this um, and and doing it. But we not internally we've not had a lot of um, success and or resources to get that done. So, uh, you know, if you actually started going down that path, I can, I've got at least one software engineer who'd love to have a conversation with you. Gary's gone farther down the path of getting Docker containerized in Augur than we've been in a year and a half. So yeah. when we did the re <laughs> when we did our major re-engineering um, as part of collaborating with Red Hat and really fixed a lot of things, we have yet, yet to get the Dockerization fully worked out. But I feel like Gary is very close. Yeah, the, right the last one is is something that we've discussed a lot. So we might have a fun discussion in a couple of weeks, Brian, because I I want to get this done um, for Q1 because I want to have things being traced in Augur and being the somewhat, I, I guess, I won't call myself a Luddite, but like a Docker diehard maybe would be the better one. Containerization diehard. Uh, really trying to make that work. So it's I, I, that's I, some good reinforcement. I'm glad to hear. And that. I think yeah. it's it's working on Ubuntu right now. Is that right, Gary? Um, no. Well, that's or, not good. Not sure yet. <laughs> not, not working yet. It, okay. It's 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 not working for reasons that we can discuss off the call. Okay. It, it, right. We'll get cool. too technical and lose half the audience here. That's fair. That's fair. Got it. Go ahead, Remy. I would just offer that. Um, some of the very popular containerization desktop tools uh, have recently changed their license agreements in the past year or two and specifically call out governments as not being mm -hmm. able to use them for free. So uh, if you are going to containerize stuff, um, thinking about like uh, some of the platform uh, agnostic or neutral approaches or like how to do it without uh, like, the desktop like a platform. podman or something. Yeah, something like that might be a, a useful bit of documentation or testing. I know that's like asking a lot and we're only one user and like, you know, get the thing working or whatever. But I just wanted to flag that as like there are some use restrictions now in some of the containerization space that uh, folks should keep in mind. for mm -hmm. downstream. That's it. That's We've a used good Podman note. before. Yeah, I, I, I'm I not sure how well Podman just translates straight from uh, config that we can do, but I'm happy to explore that because I would also really like to not, um, you know, change contracts and then, uh-oh, my whole thing doesn't work now. Like, that doesn't feel good either, so. 
more any any more folks who use chaos tools on prem want to chime in with how they're doing that whether it's like with infra teams or they're using containers and kind of finagling it together i'm just curious to get a feel for the group here okay seems like uh that's as much as we'll get for today but if you have more thoughts yeah. about this um, feel free to drop in. I'll, I'll plug the Augur working group um, as I just kind of hopped in and I was like, I have a PR and I got that PR done in like 20 minutes and I've just been dropping them as needed. And Sean has been really great at responding. So if you want to get involved, you can. a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Gary. Yeah, no worries. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Um, so Anna added this one, and then she had to drop off. Um, so do we want to do we want to talk a little bit about the book chapter? I don't know, Matt, if you or Sean, if you've been. I I started it a long time ago, if you remember. Yeah. <laughs> so I started, I started moving it forward. I've looked at it, but it has not made it to the top of my list. I can um, add it back to the list. Well, I, honestly, the biggest thing was about how it connects with other book chapters. Like, it just wasn't clear what what this one, how it could build on things prior or kind of signal ahead to chapters later. It it felt kind of like it was just floating out there alone. Mm -hmm. I wasn't quite sure what the messaging should be. That's fair. I don't so know. It sounds like they're currently working on chapter four was that the i mean I, honestly i'd have to go back and like reorient myself yeah. we have there's quite a bit of progress on it i have but it probably stopped like i don't know just say like six months ago or something and i wasn't expecting this question today so i don't have a lot of good answers yeah i was just looking to see if i could get a feel for um i can sure <laughs> certainly dig it up and bring it up in two weeks that's not a problem okay that would be good so let's let's just move this one for whoops for the for the next the next meeting so that'll be the seventh okay um There's also a reminder, all things open. CFP is only open until March 22nd. So we've got a month to submit talk proposals. Um, it is a lovely conference. I know a lot of you have been before, but it's a very, uh, very friendly, very nice, nice conference. So I would encourage you if you're interested to um, submit a proposal. It's in, it's in Raleigh. Uh, I'm not sure when it is. I think it's, uh, it's October usually, I think. Yeah, they move it around a little bit because of the con. It's October twenty seventh through 29th. Um, yeah, they've had to shift it a little bit recently because of KubeCon and other other events. And Halloween, which they stepped on a couple of years ago. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, they moved it because of KubeCon, and then moved it on top of Halloween, which created problems for for lots of people who want to. Yeah, you know. they found out how many people are parents in the open yeah. source. <laughs> yeah more than they assumed yeah. brian said we could have a party at his house i heard yeah. that too you show i heard up? that too i should have done that the last time when y'all were here but yeah we could do that all right all right party of Sweet. brian <laughs> Okay, are um, there any other agenda items that we would like to add? Because we do have we do have a little bit more time since we didn't really do the book chapter. I can also go back to the contributor risk discussion if we don't have anything else people want to talk about. Just on the um, conferences, we do have a chaos con. Yes, oh, chaos con was great in Brussels, and we have another one coming up in Seattle <laughs> in in the afternoon and. Sean, you were also doing something around visualizations in the morning. Yeah, we're doing a visualization workshop in the morning for chaos metrics. And I'm doing that with uh, Callie and James from Red Hat. 
but we welcome involvement from others. We're going to post an agenda next week. We've been working on that a little slower than chaos con. Yeah, Georg, it might be good if you want to sync up with, with Sean, because if we're talking about visualizations for chaos, it might be really good to also have some Grimoire Lab presence at that Absolutely. workshop as well. More the merrier. This was mostly an experiment to see if we could get a, a half day for some of the more technical aspects of the project, and we can, so. Yeah, that was really nice. Uh, similarly, we're having a half day uh, data workshop at scale in mid-March um, uh, on Thursday before the conference. Mm -hmm. um, I will try to add that into the agenda. But that's not officially chaos. I mean, it'll be Callie and James from Red Hat, but obviously it's Augur and all the related chaos tools and metrics. And that's on the official scale schedule, right? Yes. I believe it is, yeah. OK, cool. It's supposed to be. It probably is. I have not put my schedule together for, for scale. I do want to make sure I go to that, though. Yeah, it is. Uh, any other CFPs that we know are, are open that people should be submitting for? Is the OSSEE one open? Oh, I didn't realize that. The OSSEU and then also um, Community Over Code, the Apache event. There's a good community track there. That will be open on Monday. Hmm. I happen to know the guy who's doing that. Is that Rich? <laughs> no, it's not Rich. It's me. Oh, well, <laughs> I know you too. You're not invited. Yeah, that's how I got myself out. <sighs> So yeah, that's that's opening up too, and they'll have the community. And and Apache's been playing around with metrics for a while, so there's there's interest in it. Um, they had their old Kibble uh, uh, project. Uh, community of Code in North America will be in uh, Denver, hmm. so we're trying to do it near a hub. And the the show EU, the EU show will be in Bratislava. Um, Slovakia, uh, June 3rd through 5th. So if anybody from Europe wants to go to that, that's a thing that's happening. So sorry, I don't mean to be self-promoting. <laughs> sorry. No, those are good. Awesome. Um, yeah, and so it's at scale. Also, Callie and I have a joint talk where we're going to talk about um, taking taking the data tsunami and uh, crafting it into actionable insights. So uh, Callie and I are going to spend some time talking about that at scale, if people are going to be there. OK, anything else we need to talk about? Do we want to go back to the contributor risk discussion? Did anybody else have anything they wanted to add that uh, we didn't have time for when I cut that conversation off? Okay, we don't we don't have to continue for the full uh, fifty minutes of of the meeting. Uh, so yeah, so thank you everybody. This I feel like these are really really interesting conversations. I know that I've got a lot of work to do on that contributor risk uh, insight guide. Um, so yeah, so thanks everybody for for joining us. Good to see everyone. Thanks, it's always everybody. sad when a meeting doesn't last all the time. Aww. <laughs> I have time to make tea before my next meeting. Uh, <laughs> All right. Bye. 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 Bye.